This is our only bag of tomato slices. Um, it was originally bagged in August of 2018. The reason I want to check it right now is because Chef Store has um, tomatoes, uh, round slicing tomatoes on sale and was thinking of making a bunch more because again this was our only bag. So we'll get these open, check them out, see if it's worth doing a bunch more. This is kind of one of the long-term test ones. And these were kind of squished when we put them in there. Uh, it's one of those instances where if you vacuum out the air, you kind of crush the, the product. So hopefully there's some that are big enough slices to still be like a slice. And it didn't really have a plan for when we did these. Kind of our thought was that we could use a slice on a, on a sandwich, on a burger, and just leave it dry because rehydrating the tomatoes won't do well. Those are kind of stuck together. And that was one of the things that we found out is don't stack a bunch of them on a tray and freeze dry them. They kind of stick. So, okay, well, that's not going to be nice slices like I'd hoped. So that's the best slice I got. Good tomato flavor. So I want to try stacking that with a little bit of Miracle Whip lettuce and bacon. BLT. Make a little sandwich out of that. Oh, add some Miracle to Whip to my tomato. And bacon. All right, so we could make a BLT this way could add whatever we want mustard you could use mayonnaise I suppose great tomato flavor it would add a nice crunch to some things I wouldn't try to rehydrate tomato slices I would make them into a sauce but I think they're good this way and I think it's good enough that it's worth getting a flat of tomatoes to freeze dry next time I would package them differently probably with parchment paper between the layers of tomatoes so that when it vacuums down they won't get pushed tight together and stuck. Other than that I think the tomatoes are great. They're excellent they're just not the slices I was hoping for four years ago four and a half years ago. All in all the tomatoes worked real well. Let's go buy some tomatoes. Oh those look good. Down there. That one there. That one. Yep. I'm thinking it looks slightly less ripe. Yep. Which is probably what I want for this. Flats of tomatoes, 17 bucks. So we got some goodies for freeze drying. Some tomatoes, lasagna, and burger patties. The tomatoes. I'm going to slice the tomatoes, make a bunch of slices, and freeze dry them. So it's a two-layer box of tomatoes. I don't even know what it weighs. It's a lot of tomatoes. Anyway, we'll get these sliced and get them on to these little corrugated plastic pieces with a piece of parchment paper on for pre-freezing. I'll probably do a couple of stacks at a time. And then I'll be transferring them to the freeze dryer trays. Now I could use strips of parchment that are the size of the trays, but then I can't get as many at a time because I don't have boards for that. So that would be a better plan overall, but I'm not doing it that way because I'm not set up for that. And I don't know if I'm going to do a lot of this type of thing. If I start doing more than the, of that, I probably cut a bunch of pieces that will fit those trays so I can pre-freeze in that size and shape. But for today, we'll just try this out. So a lot of tomatoes, 50 in this one. Well, 49, I already took one out and used it. So cutting the tomato slices. I'm um, using a lid that I had, but I think it has the right depth for the slices I want. Then I've just got it setting on a wet paper towel to help make it sticky uh, so it won't slide. And I've got my teeny little knife that I had made out of a steak knife and just ground it down until I have this little knife that we use when we're just cutting out little bits of things. So I'll just 
pull the core out and that can go to the chicken. So I'm going to cut just the tip off the end first. We end up with really nice slices. And then I'm just putting them on the corrugated plastic sheets with a piece of parchment on it. That looks like that's going to give me pretty nice even And you might say, get a mandolin slicer. We had one 20 or so years ago. Um, and maybe we just didn't have a good one, but I frankly didn't see it as a great kitchen tool because it had very limited uses and all of them could be performed with a knife. We'll continue. We'll get these all on sheets and then into the freezer for pre-freezing. After they're pre-frozen, We'll transfer them into uh, gallons or two gallon Ziplocs or plastic bags of some kind and wait for their turn in the um, in the freeze dryer. And I'm just peeling off a little piece of that because I don't want the end piece to be covered with the skin when I go to use it after it's been freeze dried. So there's the slices from just two tomatoes. So getting about eight slices per tomato. All right, that's going to the freezer to pre-freeze with all the others. So we're starting batch number 609. Uh, this is going to be a batch of sliced tomatoes. The sliced tomatoes is about having slices to put on sandwiches or on burgers or something like that. It's not about making sauce, so I wouldn't crush, I wouldn't plan on crushing them afterwards and making a sauce. Now, if something, if they get broken or mangled, I might crush them and make them into a sauce. But when I do sauce with tomatoes, and I've done gallons and gallons of it, uh, then we take the tomatoes and squish them and, and cook them down first to get rid of some of the water and to get rid of the rawness of the sauce. Then we freeze dry them afterwards. But this is about tomato slices. If you're looking for sauce, this one really isn't the sauce, but you could make sauce out of these. But I just wouldn't do all this work to make sauce out of them later. I'd make sauce right away and not bother slicing them. The freeze dryer has been pre-cooling for more than two hours now, probably two and a half hours. It's lower than negative 40 right now. We'll go get the tomatoes and get them on the trays. Okay, I'm going to start with tray one. And I'm going to get a new tear weight on this because I'm going to use two pieces of parchment on each tray because I'm going to have a layer of parchment between two layers of tomato. So 757. And then we can load them up with the tomatoes. Here's one of the bags of tomatoes that we sliced up. And we'll get those loaded up there. So I'm just going to lay them out as quickly as I can and try to get the tray as full as I can. So I won't get a lot of tomatoes on each tray this way, but I want to make sure that I don't get them too thick and have the problem of them not drying well. And then I'm going to add a thermometer, just tuck it uh, somewhere under a tomato slice, and then next tray. And the same thing. Yeah, trying to get them to lay pretty flat. Not a lot of tomato, but I'm not going to push it too much because I really want them to dry well and not stick together. Okay, let's see what we got on that one. Now these are going to go back in the freezer for subsequent batches because I have some other ones I'm going to use right now. So I did some of them with salt sprinkled on them because even when I'm doing a burger or sandwich, I like salt on my tomato, so I thought I should try some on the slices. I'll be able to reuse these parchments on the next uh, batches. So there's only about one tomato left of the salted ones. Those will go back into the freezer for later. 
They're all on the trays, two layers deep and ready to start freeze drying. So that batch of tomatoes has a little bit more than 6.4 pounds in it. So a lot less than the normal 10 pound batch, but I would have to go three layers high to get 10 pounds and I'm not sure how that would dry. I will perhaps try that on the next batch because I have more than enough tomatoes for another batch. Uh, but I was concerned about the middle layer of tomatoes if I layered them three high. With just two high, you have one touching the heated tray. And then the, the top layer is below the other heating element, which is drying it from the top. And I find that the top actually dries faster than the bottom. So if I put a third layer in there, it's not going to be directly heated by either side of that. I will have to try that because I'd like to get more than just 6.4 pounds in a batch. The display is showing that it's negative 51 right now. So it's plenty cold. We'll get them in there starting at the bottom. Okay, I'll make sure I have a seal ring all the way around because I'm missing a couple of spots right now. People ask if the fiddling with the seal thing is necessary. And no, it's really not. The amount of gap we're talking about is thinner than a thickness of a sheet of paper and is only in a little bit of area. If you're going to be around when it starts, so if it does fail to seal, you're going to be able to be there and take care of it, then it's never a problem. I'm almost never there when it starts, so I just want to make 100% sure that it's sealed so that there's no doubt that it's going to do fine. It's really an unnecessary thing for the vast majority of people. I've got a good seal ring all the way around there, a good band, uh, so I know that there's not going to be air leaking in and out of there and, well, it's not going to go in and out, it's just going to go in the hot air from out here going in there as that cold air condenses and pulls more air in. We don't want that. So now we don't have to worry about that. So these will be done in probably about two days or a little less because there's not as much um, mass of food in there as a lot of times, but it's tomatoes, sliced tomatoes as opposed to Roma tomatoes. This is very, very water heavy. There's not a lot of tomato uh, solids there. It's mostly water. So we'll be back when it's done, probably be about two days. So don't go away, it'll be just a second. The machine's been running for 32 and a half hours now, and the tomatoes have been in there for 30 hours. It says it's about done. Uh, it had already done its main dry cycle, and it didn't need all 30 hours, so it skipped the last half of it or more, um, and it says it's done. The problem is, it's really late at night. It's 11.30 at night. So it may be done, might not. Let's check them. I'll bypass the rest of it with the down arrow. And then I'll open the drain valve. Okay, so this will be our first check. And it will give me a chance to rotate the trays too. And they're very warm. So tray one, 7.97. So that means all the tomatoes on it and the thermometer is only 40 grams. And the thermometers are about 8 grams, 8 or 9 grams. There is not a lot of weight left on the tomatoes. Okay, I'm going to rotate the tray positions. So I'll leave that out for a second. 787. And I'm going to put tray 2 up at the top position and tray one down a position. Okay, tray three. And these are some of the ones with salt on them. 787 on that one also. They look great, they feel great. Okay, we'll be rotating that position also. And 796. Okay, then we'll put those back up. And tray four, I'll put up a spot. Tray three will come down a spot. I'm going to restart it, but I'm also going to make a post-it note or make a note to remind myself how long it has been and how much I'm adding. With this older one, the clock keeps going until you stop the machine at the end of the batch. With my sister's newer one, it tracks the actual time that it's in those cycles. 
uh, the drying. Mine doesn't, so I need to kind of watch that myself. It's 32 and a half hours. I'll make a note of that and how much I add. Now, close the drain valve. Now, with the drain valve closed, I'm going to add more dry time. I did close the drain valve. It has the reminder. Continue. And I'm going to go ahead and add, yeah, I'm just adding three hours right now because then I can add another two or three hours in the morning to rewarm it because it's going to be 40 or 50 below when I finally come and check it. And part of the reason I don't want to bag it tonight is these tomatoes, I'm going to do something a little different for the bagging and it's going to be much more time consuming. I'm hoping it will give me wonderful, nice slices when I go to use them and not have them stuck together like my test bag did from two or three years ago. Uh, those, I just put them all in the bag and, event and then kind of vacuumed it out. So they kind of squished together and most of them got broken and some of them kind of stuck together. It was hard to take them apart. So these, I'm going to make sure that none of them touch another tomato. That's gonna to be a little more time consuming. So I'll be back and check this in the morning. It's the next day, and of course it had stopped during the night and just sat there chilling and waiting for me to restart it to warm it. This is the older machine. It doesn't have the warm tray function. And when it's that cold, at least on my sister's, the warm tray function is not enough to warm the food. It does warm the bottom of the tray, but it doesn't warm the middle of the food. So using the more dry time seems to be a better uh, use or a better way to warm the food back up and that's what she's been doing on hers and we will show hers sometime this is in the last five minutes the heaters have been off for 10 minutes already it's starting to cool we'll get them out weigh them and see if they lost any weight from last night's check if they did then they're going back in for more um, let's find out so I'll bypass the rest of the time using the down arrow We'll get the drain valve open. Okay, so tray one. Okay, and it was 797. Now it's 797. So no change on that one. Tray two. Oops, sliding around. Okay, no change on that one. Tray three. This is one with the salt and no change on that one and no change on that one. I'll use no defrost and I'll get these away from this right away because it has the cool air coming out of there. And so it would end up dumping cool, moist air onto these. So we'll get these moved right away. So we're showing about 46 and a half hours, but it was only 32 and a half hours before I let it go overnight and then added more time to check it. So they haven't lost any weight after the 32 and a half hour point. So I'm going to put 32 and a half hours for how long did that take to dry. So 32 and a half on that one. That batch took 27.42 kilowatt hours. So the tomatoes are nice and dry. These two trays are the ones with salt. I'll be interested in trying those out. And these two trays are the ones without the salt. Let's get the final weights and then figure out what we're going to do with them. I already have the first tray in the zipper bag. And of course, if I'd remembered to start the recording, we would have known all about this. So this tray without the thermometer is 779. And because I'm going to bag these differently than anything I've bagged before on video, it's going to take a long time to get them bagged. So to protect them from moisture over the next oh, half hour, hour, I'm going to put them in the heavy two gallon zipper bags. And I'm using the two gallon one, even though all of these would fit in a one gallon, so that I can just simply pour them in and not have to uh, really, no chance on crushing them. There's the bag that has the unsalted tomato slices. And that was uh, about three and a quarter pounds. Now it's about two ounces. Tray three. Now this batch is one of the ones that has the salt on it. 
778. To keep those separate, I'm making myself a note that these are, have the salt on them. And you can definitely see the salt on some of these. 787. Get those in there. And these trays and papers I'm going to reuse because the next batch is also going to be tomatoes. So I'll just save these papers, wipe them off, and put the trays in the freezer to chill because the tomatoes are already frozen and I want frozen trays to put the frozen tomatoes on. So we'll get these wiped off later after we take care of these. Okay, I do want to test out one of these tomato slices with the salt. Let's see, is there a nice salty looking one? You know, this was the top of it, so it has more of the peel. Wow, that is a wonderful flavor. Those are really good. I'll be back in just a second to share the total weight loss and what they weigh now. The bottom line on the tomatoes was before they went in the freeze dryer, it was about 6.4 pounds or uh, 2911 grams. Afterwards, it's 126 grams or just a little more than a quarter of a pound, about 0.28. So that means it lost over six pounds of water and it only started out as 6.4 pounds. It's almost all water. It's, it's only about four ounces of tomato left, but they're great on sandwiches. Now the bagging. If you saw the video where I used a slice of tomato to make a little BLT with just lettuce, bacon, and a tomato slice, then you'll know I wasn't real happy with the way they ended up sticking together. I had just thrown hands full of them into the bag and pushed out as much air as I could. And then of course the oxygen absorber removes 21% more and it squishes the bag pretty tight. So a lot of the slices were kind of stuck together. I'm trying something different on this one, and it's going to be controversial to some people. Let's start with the fact that I've got the bags labeled. Uh, the batch number and then a label with the batch number, and if I'd remember to uh, change it before I printed, it would have the right number, so I had to fix that. And I'm going to put eight slices into this bag, and I want the slices to stay in good shape if I can. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm using these really cheap bags that don't have any kind of closure on them. And then I'm putting two of the slices into the bag. Taxi! And then I'm uh, just flipping the top of the bag over. I'm not worried about the little flap how you normally would do for a sandwich. The point is now they can't fall out while they're in that bag. Now, if I fold it over, I've got two slices of tomato in there that are not touching. Hopefully, they'll do well with this way. The fact that the bag is not sealed will mean the oxygen can get pulled out of there easily enough. Uh, it'll take a while longer because of it has to escape from there. And then I can put that in the bag. So I already have three of those packs or six slices in there and I'll add a, a fourth one. So eight slices are now in that bag with uh, essentially some you know, extra plastic bag which will help seal it. Now comes the more controversial part and the importance of the math. This is a quart bag. If you fill this up and really bulge it out, it will hold a quart which is, of course, a little bit less than a liter, so a thousand cubic centimeters. These oxygen absorbers are rated for 300 cc of oxygen, and I know from experiments that they'll absorb far more than that. Um, the ones that I've done have done two to three times that, but all of them have done at least close to double that. This bag will have about 120 uh, cubic centimeters of oxygen in it. So obviously this is more than 120. Now what I want to do because I don't have any nitrogen system yet which I desperately need to uh, arrange for I'm going to blow this up with air. So instead of squishing out air, vacuuming air, anything like that I'm going to add air.
and seal it up so that it's big like a balloon. So I've got this, oh, I have to put the oxygen absorber in here. Well, I'll get 10 of them ready and do it all at once. Anyway, I'm going to make it big and puffy. That way when the oxygen absorber pulls out the 21% and it gets 21% squished, it won't crush my tomato slices. So I'm hopeful that that will work. That's what I'm going to do with all of this batch to test it out. And for those that is, think that it's going to be a horrible disaster and that they're going to go bad, some other thing's going to go horrible, the important thing is to remember is I'm not going to share these with you. These are from me. If they fail horribly, it's just me. Get a bunch of these ready and then I'll get the oxygen absorbers in and then we can blow them up like balloons and then heat seal them. So I'm just using the cheapest bags I could find and I'll put about eight in a pack and see how that works for each pack. And I could use different size bag. Okay. Okay. So that bag has four slices in it and one bag and none of the slices are touching. And since it's taking a while, I'm going to go ahead and get these a few at a time. So I'll get a bunch of these and we'll be back and see how it's going. That's the amount that would be in a bag. So eight slices that size. Put a couple of them on a burger. Don't share them so they're all for yourself. I'd like to fill them full of nitrogen so they'd be like a potato chip bag all puffed out to help protect them. I should label these so that I know that these have the plastic bags and I should do at least one bag puffing it full of air but not putting the plastic bag so I could compare. Maybe it's the puffing it full of air or of course nitrogen that'll make the big difference and I don't need all this because it wouldn't be compressed. And it's going to take quite a while to know so I probably won't know for months or a year or something. Okay, working on the salt ones and as I've been going along I've gotten a little bit more confident in what I'm doing. Doesn't mean I'm doing better, it's just that I'm a little more confident. I've been getting four slices in a lot of them. Uh, two of the bigger slices and then a couple of the smaller ones. And if I kind of hold them then I can flip them. And then because of the curve of that top of the tomato, if I put one facing one way and one facing the other way, then when I fold it over, they fit together nicely. Fold it this way and we've got a nice pack of eight or four pieces all at once. I'd say these tomatoes are probably the most fragile thing that I've freeze dried and then bagged. They are quite fragile. Okay, we'll continue. So down to the last couple of them. So I've got two more bags of eight. And then I've got one bag. I'm using a little pint bag with just four pieces in. The point of this is not to have a mass quantity of food put away for later. These or for the luxury of having a slice of tomato on your burger out camping or on your sandwich out um, weeks away from power and refrigeration and fresh tomatoes. It's just kind of a little luxury thing. All right, so got those in two, four, six quarts. The salt seven of the other bags. Now we'll get oxygen absorbers in those and then pop them up, which will be counterintuitive and an odd thing to do to them, but that's what I'm going to try. So I've got the 300 cc oxygen absorbers I'm going to put in there. I'll just do 10 of them at a time. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, ten. Those will wait because I still want to try to seal them as quickly as I can. It's just going to take a little extra time, I think. I'll tuck these down the sides. 
make sure they're out of the zipper area. And I can zipper the bag most of the way. Yeehaw! Well, that's a puffy bag. So if they're fully puffed out, that'll be a full quart, which is just about a liter. And so there'd be 210 milliliters or 210 cc's of oxygen in there. I'll heat seal these before I finish the other ones, just to make sure that they are sealed. Though they do seem to be doing quite well. I'm going to do that one twice, make sure it's all up to temperature. And I'll get the very top edge of that bag too. And then I like to let it cool for a couple of seconds to make sure that the plastic re-solidifies in the bag. Well, that's a bag full of air. Now it should shrink down by about 21% as the oxygen is removed, but it shouldn't crush the tomatoes, I hope. And I will be getting a nitrogen system to nitrogen flush these for future batches. That one I didn't get very puffy. All right, with all those sealed, I still want to do one more thing before I put them on the shelf for storage. I'm going to add a gross weight to the bottom of each bag, so 37 grams. So this bag weighs 37 grams right now. And if it gets punctured and moisture starts getting in, something goes wrong, I'll be able to tell just by weighing it. So we'll get all those weighed and then they'll be ready for storage. I don't have time to get them into storage right now, so I'll come back later and do that. And we'll be able to see how much these shrunk down just in a few hours. Those are ready for storage, but I don't have time to put them in storage right now. So we'll come back and look at them later. Hopefully things don't get moved and we can come back and check and get a look at some of these puffy bags and then compare them. So we'll come back and visit these later and then get them into storage. But right now I got other places to be. Three and a half hours later and some of them have definitely already squished down a lot from the oxygen absorber. Yeah, not all puffy like it was, quite a bit smaller. And now I'm going to get these into a bin and I'm going to use a bin that doesn't have anything else in it yet. Well, I suppose these should be near the top so they don't get squished. Anyway, uh, I will get a nitrogen system because for things like this where I want to fill up the bag, putting air in it's not the best choice, but it's what I had available and with the oxygen absorber to take the oxygen back out i'm not really concerned about it now let's go get them in a bin so that's almost six and a half pounds of tomatoes ended up bagging into 15 bags i've got 14 quart bags and one pint bag and anywhere from about oh well the pint bag i put four little slices in and some of the other ones have up to 12 slices including the the top and bottom slice of the tomato, which is smaller than the main slice. Anyway, I'm going to put those in 10 back. Uh, there's still room in that bin. And then that will leave two more empty bins out of these 40. Actually, there's 48 because there's eight more bins on the third set of shelves back, but only four small ones are empty back there getting low on space but we will be snacking more of them and that'll use some of them up and then we'll make space and get the back bin and this one has very little in it we'll go ahead and get the tomatoes in there too and I think I'll put the next batch of tomatoes on top of here also. So I'll have very light things on the top of here so that they won't get crushed. 
So there's a lot of room for additional bags in here and I'll put the rest of the tomatoes in here and then who knows what. I'll try to keep light things on top of this. Okay. So that's it for this batch and on to the next one which is also going to be tomatoes so I won't show a lot of it because it'll be boring to see it twice unless I have something new to show. The tomatoes have been in there for 32 and a half hours now. That's not right. The machine's been running for 32 and a half hours now and the tomatoes have been in there for 30 hours.